is Krishna and who is Lord Brahma? First comes Lord Brahma and then comes Lord Krishna. And then in the scriptures, we find the scripture <coughs> that some rishis, they approach Lord Brahma for a conjugal relationship with him. And Lord Brahma, <coughs> he said, this incarnation, I only have one wife, Sita. What is that called? Somebody has only one wife? Mariada. Hmm? Mariada Purushottama. So Mariada Purushottama, Sri Ramchandra said, no sorry, this I cannot grant to you. But if you want to come back, I think the Vedas also requested something like this. The Rishis and the Vedas. When I come back as Krishna, you can go to Braj and take birth as gopis. And then we can have a beautiful conjugal relationship. In other words, in the scriptures, there is a connection between Sita and Ram. Actually, Sita and Ram are different. Narayan is not different. It is one. The Supreme Lord is one. But he manifests in so many forms. Lila avatars, Guna avatars. Then we have the most amazing <coughs> Yuga avatars. Then we have the expansions of Krishna when he expands into many coward boys and many calves. This is a, a, a Lila expansion also of Krishna. Then we have the expansions of the Puru, the uh, Purusha avatars. There's the Purusha avatars. Then there's the Shakti Avesha avatars also. So Krishna has so many. Somewhere it says Krishna has any many incarnations. As there's waves on the ocean. Waves on the ocean. <coughs> that means Krishna's pastimes are unlimited, right? If he has as many incarnations as <coughs> there's waves on the ocean, oh God. So we can just concentrate on the ones we have manifested in front of us. The most delightful and most beautiful and most merciful of all which is Mahaprabhu. Because without Mahaprabhu, we would not know about Krishna, we would not know about Rama. And that's <coughs> why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu shows his sadbuj, his form where he is Krishna and Rama and Mahaprabhu in one person. And that was revealed to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. In the house in Jagannapuri, to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he revealed, I am the same Ram, I am the same Krishna. Also in the case of Murari Gupta, <coughs> when Murari Gupta was Hanuman Ram Bhakta incarnate in Gaura Leela, and he was crying, Oh, you're always talking about Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And I cannot give up my Ram. <laughs> I cannot give him up my Ram, my, my Sita Ram, Lakshman. So, what do you have? In Mayapur, you have Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman of Murari Gupta, right next to the Yoga Pit. So, the point is clear. So not, do not commit a blunder and discriminate between Ram and Krishna. But see them all as simultaneously. But then we got the Brahma Sanghita. And in the Brahma Sanghita it says, Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajam. Just like the one candle is lit up by another candle, that original candle is Govinda. And that original candle Govinda 
is again divided in two, in Radha and Krishna. So, when we analyze between Radha and Krishna, oh, it's very difficult. Because Krishna is worshipping Radha and Radha is worshipping Krishna. It is the opposition, it's the opposed principle of the material world. In the material world, everybody says first me and then you. In the spiritual world, it's first you and then me. It's exactly so. Radha and Krishna, they always say first you. Definitely. <coughs> so it is a very intricate relationship they are revealed by the divine. That the divine relationship is so beautiful that it is always giving first honor to the beloved. And the Supreme Beloved is Sri Radha. So who is first, Krishna or Radha? Inseparable they are. <coughs> and they join together Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha, Krishna Nariya. <coughs> they become Radha. Outside, Krishna inside. And the mission is maximum magnanimity. Mahavatanyaya. Maximum magnanimity. That is Mahaprabhu. Why? Because he's Radha. Because Radha is the most magnanimous. Because she gives Krishna. So the Divine Feminine is very important <coughs> because it has been punched, subjugated, mistreated. The Divine Feminine is representative, represented by Sri Radha, by Bhumi, by Saraswati, by Sri Lakshmi. The Divine Feminine is represented by Sita Devi. Sita Devi is also considered Bhumi Mata. She comes from Mother Earth and she returns to Mother Earth. <coughs> so Sita, <coughs> Sita is very, very important. In our spiritual life, especially in the United Nations of the Spirit, we are worshipping that Sita. Because she's a representative of Bhumi. She's a representative of the highest. Sita Ram, Lakshmi Narayan, Radha Govinda. They are the highest. We are worshipping the highest. We are not going to some Deva worship. We are not worshipping some Devas to getting some temporary benefit from that. That is not our process. Our process is to invoke the highest. And the highest is revealing itself in different moments in different ways. And for us the most tangible highest is Sri Gauranga. Because he's Radha and Krishna in one, he's Sita and Ram in one. In Gauranga we got Sita Ram, we got Radha Krishna. And we got Lakshmi Narayan also. <coughs> Actually, there's one form of Lord Chaitanya where he reveals himself as Narayan, where he's also Narayan. So, <coughs> who is the Supreme? Nobody can tell. Only these revel revelations have been given by the Acharyas and the scriptures. They have given us divine revelations about the divine realities. But that is only to be taken upon your head. Our dear Srila Bhakti Rashak, Srila Maharaj, he used to put his hands on top of his head like this. Whenever a high, high topic was coming for discussion, he says, this I keep on top of my head, I worship. I don't take it inside my head for analyzing, scrutinizing. Huh? We have a tendency to scrutinize everything, to doubt everything. As a matter of fact, 
doubt is another faculty God has given. Thanks to doubting capacity, we can reject the Tama and Avidya. If we have no doubting capacity, then Tama and Avidya we would have to accept as good and best. But we have a doubting capacity. But that doubting capacity you should not apply to those divine revelations because they are above. Like if I say, I love you, where are you going to take that? In your mind? Let me analyze it. Does he love me? Does he not love me? No. Either you accept it in your heart, he loves me and that's it. But you cannot say, you cannot even analyze my words, I love you. No, no way. Of course, in Krishna consciousness, we learn to love everyone. That is really the most beautiful. Not some relative statement, just motivated by some conditions, by some temporary conditions. That's why in this world, from the source of love, it becomes deception. Oh, today he loved me and yesterday and tomorrow he don't love me anymore. This is, so we better learn how to love everybody. That is the higher love. So, Krishna loves everyone. That's why he is in the heart of everyone. Imagine. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigaha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam Sarvasya Chahamri De Sani Vishnu Matasmi Tir Gyanam Apoanam Cha Vedaisya Sarvair Ahaneva Vedya Vedanta Krit Veda Ved Eva Cha I am in the heart of everyone Krishna says and I am the origin of everyone He's not only in the heart of everyone, he's also the origin of everyone. So Krishna is the origin of you and plus he's in your heart. So what more you need? Well, if he's in your heart, hug him. Hug him in your heart. Sri Paramatma, I don't let you go. Well, he's not letting you go to, become, to begin with because that's him but you can also say my lord in my heart thank you thank you thank you you are so kind you are accompanying me you're tolerating my horrible behavior oh god i'm coming to your lotus feet please take me as your servant make anything with me you want make me a dust a dust particle of your lila of your pure devotees feet make me anything you want but <coughs> Please don't reject me. Please don't send me away. I'm yours. And I cannot live without you. Be because you are the creator. You are my creator. So how can I live without you? This is not possible. And you are in my heart. So... Radhe Radhe. So you are in my heart. And, and you know Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, that his relationship with us is eternal. <coughs> Krishna is so wonderful. He's always with us. The whole Bhagavad Gita is a total nectar. Krishna is giving us so much information about his divine Leela, his divine plan. What is that plan? You want to understand me? Very good. Then learn how to love me. 
If you learn how to love me, you will understand. Don't understand me with the head. Understand me with the heart. Bhaktiya. No? Patram pushpam falam to yam yome bhaktiya pranashyati. Krishna says, I will only accept your offering if you offer it with love. <coughs> if you give me your love, then I will accept it. So it's a question about love. Everything is love. Bhakti yoga is love. It's not a business. You're not approaching Krishna, oh, give me some good money, some good fortune, I want a nice car. And if Krishna not giving, like Srila Prabhupada used to give this example, that the German woman and the European woman, when the Second World War came, they they said, oh my God, my husband is going into the war. Please bring him back to me. But none of the men came back. They all died by the millions. And then the woman, they lost their faith in God. They became very callous and materialistic. Oh, we asked God to look after our husband. He didn't look after them, so now we don't believe in you, God. So, this is how when we take everything <coughs> with the mind. But we are not supposed. We are not supposed to take things with the mind. We are supposed to spirituality can only be understood in the heart. Srila Prabhupada. He's so kind to us, unbelievably kind. He's giving us the chance to hear and to also get it clear. Some people practice yoga and they have no idea what yoga is. Yogi nama pisari shamat katen antaratmana shradavam bhachati yumam yumi maktatumumam. And only my bhakta who understands that I'm Yogeshwara. And Yogi Namma Pisarvisham. Only the one who has love for me, he can understand me. He's the greatest of all yogis. Yogeshwara and Yogi Namma Pisarvisham. Connecting. The yogi with Yogeshwara. And who is Yogeshwara? Yogeshwara is Ishwara Paramakrishna, Satchitananda Vidra, Anadya Nadya Govinda, Sarva Karana Karana. Therefore, if we ignore Sri Krishna, if we ignore <coughs> the Bhagavad Gita, nothing we will understand. Everything will be speculation on the mental platform. So we have to study the scriptures very scrutinizingly. Something we are neglecting, unfortunately. When Prabhupada came to Venezuela, <coughs> some devotees were recommended for second initiation. At that time, one of Prabhupada's disciples pointed out, <coughs> he said, Prabhupada, these people recommended for second initiation, they know nothing. They don't have scriptural knowledge, they are not prepared. And Prabhupada said, very interesting, he said, there's Shastric Brahmins, and there's non-Shastric <coughs> Brahmins. <coughs> Some Brahmins, they're Brahmins by their behavior and by their loving, by their wanting to serve the truth. But they don't know so much scripture. <coughs> and then there's others, they're very learned in the scriptures. But despite being learned in the scriptures, they are not very devotional. We sometimes see that. Some people get lots of knowledge, become arrogant.
very arrogant. <coughs> So we should understand that the divine plan is always above our head. <coughs> the divine reality is always above our head. <coughs> always above your head. What can you put inside of your head, my dear? Your teeny little chickpea brain? What in the heck are you going to put in there, to be honest? Yes, by the divine grace you may have some appreciation. You may have some divine dream. You may have some divine feeling. You may have some dedication to the divine. Very good. Welcome. But. You cannot understand the divine. How in the world will you understand the divine, my God? This is all beyond you. The divine is beyond you, it's beyond me. Who can understand the infinite? Incarnations like waves on the ocean. And why waves on the ocean? What's the big deal with that? Look how many stars in the skies. There seem to be as many there as waves on the ocean. <laughs> and you can almost see them. Well, if you can't see them, then you look at the pictures of the Hubble telescope. And then you start seeing stars and stars and stars and galaxies and universes. We don't know. If all what the Hubble telescope sees is still part of our universe, if yes, if the answer is yes, we are not looking into other universes even to the universe, then I can only say, oh my God, poor Brahma, <laughs> he has to look after all that. This guy is busy. How did he make it to come to Vrindavan to test Krishna? That shows how important Krishna was. And if you can see other universes from this telescope, then you can imagine if that's what the telescope can see, <coughs> what will be the divine reality of the cosmic Mahatattva creation? <coughs> So, this is all the world of achintya, inconceivable, inconceivable. It is so inconceivable, <laughs> you know? Do you know what the means, what the word inconceivable means? It means you are finished. <coughs> you cannot conceive it. No way. All your brain power useless. All your electronic power useless. All your technology useless. It's achintya. Krishna is achintya. <coughs> but we want to reduce him so that we can package him and make a business out of it. Maybe we can sell little Krishnas. Like now you can get from Hong Kong. They have all these nice little Krishna figures they make in resin. So they said, maybe we don't believe in Krishna, but we can make money with him. But this is not the way you can catch Krishna. As a matter of fact, these, these resin Resin figures are beautiful, but they are not deities. They do not qualify as deities, but they can qualify as pictures of Krishna. Because some of them are really, really, really beautiful, but still. 
Krishna cannot be packaged, Krishna cannot be He cannot be cornered. Our mentality in this material world is we want to get everything into our fist. Like, I got it. Aha. I have it in my fist now. Nothing you can do about it. I got it in my fist. But when you try to get Krishna in your fist and then you open your fist, there's nothing. <laughs> gone so this is what our mind is doing we try to catch God and say oh God is he's <coughs> achintya he's inconceivable so how you will you understand Ram, Sita Ram, Lakshman how you will understand him how, you, how will you understand this temple in Vrindavan just like the story was that Tulsidas came here to Vindavan and he went into a temple and he did not bow down. I don't know why, but that's not my business. That's Tulsidas <laughs> business. Anyhow, so then he answered because I don't see him as Sita Ram. And then Krishna took his flute away, took a bow and arrow and and Radha became like Sita and then Tulsi went oh, oh, oh. and then he bowed. <coughs> so I, I don't know, he had to see it with his eyes or I don't know. I don't want to think about it. But the fact is, Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman, you know Mahaprabhu gives the answers to all. Achinta Veda Veda. Beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This is Vrindavan. This is all the holy dams have taken shelter here. You know that? Badrinath, Kedarnath, they came to Vrindavan to take shelter. Ayodhya, maybe this is the representation of Ayodhya in Braj. Because it's such a beautiful Ram temple. Who could expect this? And very secret. Not many people know this temple, but the Baba who was sitting there up there, you know, this Baba actually made this temple. Or maybe his Guru did, I don't know. But he is the Baba who has always looked after this temple. I know him for more than 20 years. And when he saw a, a group of foreigners coming, he became so curious. Then he made me set up there, who are these guys? <laughs> Actually, he knows me. If he can remember me, I don't know, but we, I've come here before. <coughs> but, but like this, Baba, the Baba came, oh, who's <coughs> visiting my Ram today? So, that's why we had to make the class here, because the Darshan is at 8, and also Darshan is 8 at Haridev, so, the only way we can get those two darshans was stay till it <laughs> and have the darshan because these are historical places. So, maybe this place is Ayodhya in Braj because it's <coughs> said that all the Tirtas have come to Vindavan to Braj Mandal to take shelter. Even Prayak Tirtha came here in the form of a, of a, a of an old man who was rolling on the ground in Braj. And Nanda Maharaj went to take baths in Pavan Sarovar. He just had announced a few days ago that he was going to Prayag Tirtha to get himself purified. And Krishna Lala, he said, Nanda Baba, where are you going? Oh, we are going to Prayag Tirtha. No, Baba, don't go there. Stay here. I don't want you to go away. Like children say, when father is going away, then the children say, no, 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 no. Don't do this. We need to stay here. So Krishna argued like this. 
But Nanda Maharaj says, no, it is a holy place of pilgrimage for Indians. For Bharata Varsha, you go to, like Nanda Maharaj, he would go to Kurukshetra for the, the, the eclipse. So they were very religious people. They followed the Vedic rules. And <laughs> they went to Gaya. They went to, to, to Prayag Tirtha for Kumbha Mela. So Nanda Baba said, I'm going there for getting some purification for my family. But Krishna <coughs> said, no. Pitaji, no, no. Don't go to Prayag, not necessary. We are in Vrindavan, Vrindavan is everything, we have everything, you don't need to go there. Anyway, but Nanda Maharaj had some doubts about it. Because what a man will think when the little baby, the little kid is giving philosophical arguments, you know. Both Mahaprabhu and Krishna defeated father and mother with philosophy. Is that right? Rasa Vihari, is that right? So, so then the next day, Nanda Baba went to Bhavan Saroma, which is on the foothill of the, the mountain where they live. And there he saw a man lying on the ground. Ooh, 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 he was wailing. And Nanda Baba says, what's happening here? Dear man, what, what, who brought you to brunch here? What are you doing here? And the, the man said, oh, Baba, I'm Prayak Tirtha. I'm coming here to wash myself in Pavan Sorova <coughs> because so many millions of people come to wash themselves in Prayag. They're all the sins I'm getting from all the people. So I feel so painful. So I come here to purify myself and take baths in Pavan Sorova. And Nanda Baba said, oh, and I was going to go to Prayag. <laughs> And Prayag Tirtha is coming here to take baths in Paman Sarova. When he went up, he said, Lala? Yes, Peter. We're not going to Prayag, we're staying in Braj. Hey! <laughs> so, this is, see, this is something to learn that you don't have to go to any other Tirtha when you have Braj because all the holy Tirthas are here. But if you want to go to preach the glory of the Dhamma and Krishna somewhere else, then wherever you go becomes a Tirtha. That is also clearly explained. Every place becomes a holy Tirtha when a devotee starts preaching the Harikata of the holy name as he learned from Sri Guru. <coughs> So here you can see even the tilak. The tilak is tilak. There is bows, bows and arrows next to the tilak. So, so this is, this is tilak. make it clear, no? We are with Ram. I also installed Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman a few times in my life. What? What? One time, <laughs> Srila Prabhupada said that Lord Ram, he went to, he went to Brazil. And Kumbhakarna, Ravana, they got all the gold from Brazil. And then there was a tunnel going through the, through the earth which connected Sri Lanka with Brazil. So, in Brazil, there's also a story <coughs> that there's a tunnel going from Brazil to India. That is also there. So, we heard that story, and then we wrote a letter to Srila Prabhupada, Says Srila Prabhupada, I'm here in Brazil and I heard that Lord Rama came to Brazil. If that is true, shall we have deities of Ramachandra in Brazil? And Prabhupada answered me in a letter. He said, yes. Lord Rama went to Brazil and I authorize you you install Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman in Brazil. 
And so then he invited me to Mumbai because he had just installed Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman in Mumbai. So he had come to Mumbai, check it out, how the puja of Sita Ram is going there, then get the deities to Brazil. So I went to Mumbai, I studied it, then I went and got the deities of Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman, then I took them to Brazil and we made a beautiful temple for them. Those Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman, they are still worshipped in Brazil. Beautiful temple. So this was one of the Sita Ram Lakshman Hanumans. Another one was in Mexico, in Tepoztlan. There is one family, they are all Ram Bhaktas. They only talk about Ram, the children are called Lakshman and Ram, and everything is Ram conscious. And they said, we want to worship Lord Ram. And so they got, they got this most beautiful, small Sita Ram Lakshman deities, and now in Tepoztlan we also have Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman temple. So, the Divine Lord can be worshipped in any of His divine forms, but we generally in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu worship Radha, Goranga, Radha, Brajaswara. Goranga, Radha, Brajaswara. This is our special gift of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Bhakti Vinod Thakur. They have given this type of puja to us. They have awakened our, our awareness that we can worship Krishna in this particular form. So, by the grace of Sri Krishna, now we are here in Vrindavan and visiting a Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman temple, <coughs> which wasn't on my itinerary to go to, but because the temple was closed, I was going to take you to Radha Brajamohan of Narottam Dastaku, which is also around the corner from here. But as we walked by the Ram temple, I said, let's say hello to Lord Ram and my old Baba here. And so it was Lord Ram brought us here by his grace. You know, Sita Devi has worshipped Radha Gopinath in Chitra for 13 years. And the same Radha Gopinath was brought to Chief Radha Gopinath. But the same was brought where? When we go to Puri from Calcutta, Remuna, Chief Chora Gopinath. Yes. That deity was worshipped by Sita Devi in Chitrakut. So she actually <coughs> prayed to Rama to bring him Radha Krishna deity. So Radha Krishna, Radha Gopinath deity was given by Lord Rama to Sita no. in, in Chitrakut. And then the so they worshipped for 13 years during their exile in Chitrakut. And then later, the king of Remuna came to Chitrakut and brought those deities to Chitra Gopinath, that place. It's a worship by Sita Ram. Oh. Yes. This Sita talk, Ram. I have not heard this. Yes, yes. it's written in our books. This is... Chitrakut was the place of the, where they were hiding? Yes, for 13 years, during 14 years exile. And there in the forest, Sita asked Lord Ram to give Radha Krishna the Yes, he said, uh, I want to worship. So, Rama created this Radha Govina lady himself. It's a bad thing, right? It has happened. You mean the deities in Kirak Shola Gopinath, they are made by Lord Ram? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. You but nobody you tells you that when you go there. Huh? Nobody tells you that when you go there. Yes, but that's the reality. 
that they also worship Radha Gopina, which you will worship to today evening. Well, Gopinath expands in so many joyous, joyous forms. It's very close to inconceivable that these things go on, that now here we are found. And it's also, I mean, I would have expected Sita to worship a deity of Lord Ram, but that they worship rather Gopinath yes. in the forest. That also for 13 years. What happened? Ravana showed up at the end. What? Ravana? No, no, no. After 13 years, they proceeded on towards south because that was the main purpose of one path. So they went towards Sri Lanka. The last year was a fight with Ravana. The 14th year. The 14th year. <coughs> the first she spent the exile in Chitra. Yes. You have been to Chitra Maharaj? No. You must. It's the only pilgrimage remain of uh, Ramayana, which is still like thousands of years ago. There is no modernity, no commercialization, no construction. Everything is very, very... We went to Ayodhya. But Ayodhya was not so nice with all the, mili the military. But I'm so grateful you brought us here. I didn't really. And as you said, this is Ayodhya. I This is Ayodhya. So we went to Ayodhya and Ayodhya and now Ayodhya brought us here. And now we hear here that Ram made deities of Radha Gopi. Ram made deities of Radha Gopi. Now it's too, too beautiful. Sita Deva, Sita Devi worship Gopi. Amazing. So you can see Sita and Rama eternally connected. <laughs> now I request Rasami Hari to give us a little bit of an introduction. What is the Surya Vamsa and the Chanda Vamsa? Because here on top of Lord Ram we have sun on the right side, moon on the left side, and we hear that Krishna appears in the Chandravan. Chandramansa in Rama in Suryaman. In Suryamansa. What is the meaning of this? Actually, Supreme Lord, when he descends, he accepts his devotees to be his parents, who have that parental devotional service like Vatsalya. So Lord Rama comes, he accepts Dashrat and Kaushalya. <coughs> And Dashrat king is in the lineage of Surya. So this lineage begins from Surya and goes down to Dashrata. And this is called Raghupul, the main first uh, most famous king of this lineage was Raghu. From Raghu Raghuvansh. Raghuvansh. Raghunath. Yes. And this is described in Harivansh Puran very nicely. It's more about the Surya Vansh. In Bhagavatam, in ninth canto, we get the story of all the kings of Surya Vansha, like Mandhata, Harishchandra, Raghu, uh, Bhagirath who brought Ganga. They are all Surya Vansha kings. And they are known for their commitment, for their promise. Uh, it's a saying that Raghukula Rita Sada Chaliyai Prana Jai Par Vachana Nargai. The translation is they can give their life, but they cannot 
let their blood down. So that is why Dashrath promised to his wife KK to give two boons, and she got Lord Rama to be exiled <coughs> to the forest and his son Bharata to be the next king. So they never break their promise. They are known for this. Harishchandra was the only person who is cited who always spoke the truth in his life. Satyavadi Harishchandra. So they belong to that lineage, Surya Vansha. And all the Rajputs of Rajasthan, you know, all the kings, Man Singh, all Suraj Bhan, all these things, they think they are from uh, this Surya Vansha. And then we have Chandra Vansha, one of the famous Maharaj is Nimi. You know, in Bhagavatam we have Nimi Maharaj Navyogendra dialogue, very famous philosophy. Mm -hmm. So Nimi Maharaj Jayati, and this is the lineage of Supreme Lord Krishna. So it goes down to the king of Mathura, who is Shursen. Shursen. So Mathura started by Chandra Vansha from Shursen. Then it went to, down to the Ugrasen. And after that, Kansa and then. So Mathura was also rescued by Shatrugana, who was Surya Vansha. You know, when he killed Lavana Sur, the son of Madhu Daitya, and then he established Surya Vansha here. But then Surya Vansha also went off the history. Then came Shur Sena of Chandra Vansha. So there are two parallel uh, family <coughs> trees running. And both are very beautiful. But. Haribo! <laughs> so now we're going to go to the Hari Dev. <coughs> And then we go back to Vindakulja. <laughs> <laughs>